Hi y'all, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about the energy work that I have been offering in some of my embodied videos in the series that I'm putting out there. Um, you know, I am going through a series right now of just the moons and talking about what it means to have those placements in your natal birth chart. Um, but I'm also offering online tunings that accompany that energy system, if that's what you have in your natal birth chart. And so today I wanted to do a little bit of explaining about why it works um, to receive energy work through an online recording that I have done. Um, so without further ado, um, it's a little bit heady, and so I'll, I'll recommend some books if you're wanting to look into it further and some websites if you're wanting to do your own research, but I'm going to do my best to offer the basic concepts so your, your wheels can start turning and getting a picture of why it works. So it's already an astrology channel, right? Like there's already probably some esoteric folks and folks who understand energy coming to my channel, but that being said, this is all relatively new to the Western world, um, so it's really exciting and it's really, really beautiful to think about because some of what we have considered taboo and we have kind of considered woo-woo about all these people who are like, oh, I can see your aura. There is now so much explanation for why that is that can be documented in more of a Western science approach. Um, and it all has to do with shifting our principal understanding of the human body from seeing it as mechanical and chemical, meaning chemical being the hormones that run your body and energize your body. Um, that would include the food that you eat and the way that most of most doctors in the West will look at your body is is looking at from a chemical perspective and then mechanical, meaning just like how your bones articulate with each other and how you move and wh why your muscles fire. That's chemical, mechanical, right? But that being as fundamental as it is to how we understand health, when you shift that to seeing the body as electromagnetic, then everything changes with how you see the human body and it also encompasses why things like Chinese medicine and the seven chakra system have been around for so long and why they make sense, right? So everything in the universe, and you can read Nikola Tesla if you're really heady and you want to learn really specific stuff about this. You can read Albert Einstein. Um, you can read Eileen McCusick. These are She's the woman who coined my tuning fork modality that I do, the energy work modality that I offer. And I highly recommend people reading her books. She has Tuning the Human Biofield, and she has Electric Body, Electric Health, and she goes into a lot of depth in those books, and I'm going to be sourcing a lot of information from her in this video. But... So if everything in the universe has a vibration to it, which is true, and we know this now, um, for example, the table has a vibration, there are particles in the air that have vibration, and literally everything in the universe has vibration to it. So if it has vibration to it, that means that it also responds to electricity, because that is what electricity is is vibrational. That means it also has sound and it means it also has light. All of those things go together because if you picture a vibration and a waveform, that is a continuum that never stops, just like the universe never stops. So as humans, we have the ability in our eyes and ears to detect a range of frequencies of light and sound, but inevitably there's much more light, color, and sound that exists beyond what we can detect. 
And we also know that there is an electric current that runs through the center of your body. It runs from your crown chakra, if you will, to your feet, and it runs up and down. Like it, there's an ascending current and a descending current that spiral together through the core of your body and through the seven chakras that some folks are probably familiar with. Um, so when you have an electric current going through you, then inevitably you have a field of light around you. And this is now stuff that has been detected through certain devices in the West. And so it's kind of been more proven that we have auras. Only the term we use is you have a biofield. And essentially it is a field ar around your body that you can touch and feel that is actually a continuation of your body. So when people do meditation and kind of become more quiet and still and aware of their bodies, you can develop the ability to pick up on more subtleties that exist in your body, which is um, very informative. I, I'm going to segue from that to saying in the Western world, we have come to believe and, and in, in some ways been indoctrinated to believe that our thoughts exist in our brain. But with this electromagnetic perspective, you begin to understand that it is not your brain only that carries thoughts. You actually experience what you perceive as your thoughts from your body and your body sends off vibrations correlated to those experiences. So if you take a natal birth chart, for example, you know, the time you were born and the influences of the planets under which you were born have an impression on your personality they have an impression on your face, your facial structure, right? People can kind of guess your rising sign based on what you look like sometimes or things like your voice. And it's because it's an integrated and connected system. You are a being of light particles that are slowed down and construed in this particular organization and you naturally resonate in the ways and forms that you resonate. So that being said, um, there's a, a little bit more information that I want to share specifically about the energy work that I do so that folks can kind of get an idea of what's happening when I'm saying, when I say I do energy work on you, right? So now that you understand the principle that your body is made up of slowed down light particles and you have an electric current running through and a field around your body, which by the way goes out about five or six feet in all directions and then above your feet, uh, above your head and below your feet by about three feet ish, right? Which is crazy to think about. You have this massive body that you bring into the world and people can feel and sense what is in your aura when you're in, you know, when they're in your aura and, and vice versa. You can feel when you're in someone else's aura. That's a real thing. It's not, it's no longer this woo-woo, oh, only weird sensitive people say that stuff, right? We're starting to develop more sound reasoning, which in my opinion is kind of like annoying because in some senses, um, it's valuable just to trust your intuition regardless. Um, but you know, the two work hand in hand, logic and intuition. So it's nice to have a bit of both. Um, okay. So another valuable piece of information in conceptualizing this is to know that the Schumann resonance is basically quote unquote, the heartbeat of earth's atmosphere. It is the base, like the average pulse and frequency that we experience within our realm on planet Earth. 
and it is maintained through electric, elec like electricity strikes. Literally, the electricity that, um, the lightning that happens throughout the world, throughout various weather patterns continuously every day across the world, is carrying the the energy and the electric current of Earth's atmosphere and the Schumann resonance is the average of all of those lightning strikes, quite literally. And it is 7.83 hertz. Now, you as a human being naturally resonate with that frequency. For example, you have a pineal gland. Um, some people consider it hand in hand with your third eye. Your pineal gland is 30% magnetite, electromagnetic. You have a real function within your body that resonates with electricity. And some would argue that because we have calcified magnetite in our pineal glands because of the water and the chemicals in our food and the chemicals in our water, um, our intuitions have been kind of like dumbed down. Um, but naturally, as a human being, you ha that would be the argument for your intuition. So um, if the magnetite in your pineal gland is not calcified, then you are able to perceive more, much in the same way as birds can perceive patterns through the sky, electric current and patterns, and that's why they're able to navigate, right? That's how geese migrate and stuff like that. Um, so, da, 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 I hope this is coming across clear. So the Schumann resonance, um, naturally, you resonate with it as a human being, not only in your pineal gland, but all of your electric body resonates against the Schumann resonance. It is calming. It is, it brings peace when you are like, like, for example, they study the brains of monks and like people who meditate extensively or your brain during deep sleep during REM waves and your brain will be at 7.83 Hertz, the Schumann resonance. Okay. So that's an argument to bring some concept of how much you are being of this earth and how when people say they want to go outside and they love being outside and they just feel so much more calm and peaceful when they've spent time in nature like there is a real reason that nature is medicine because it is the most cleansing and purifying thing for your body it brings you life um so and like you draw that energy up through your feet. Okay, so that ascending current that I was talking about up through your center is drawn from the frequencies of the earth through your feet. Like there's tons of research about that that you can go spin off on if you want. But I think that's pretty like starting to be more mainstream that people talk about earthing and like how there's science behind putting your bare feet on earth's surface. And likewise, the descending current that we receive through our heads is because your physical body naturally resonates with the sun. The sun is our provider of that source of energy. So the earth and the sun, um, and then you in between. You are like, you're like the being in between that has the ability to create from these two opposing positive and negative forces interacting. I hope that made sense. So the, the sun is, is electric and earth is magnetic and you are electromagnetic, okay? Okay, what else do I need to say? Um, yeah, so again, it's like, I'm not going to be able to 
before we go into every piece of information that would make this make sense for folks, I'm hoping that this will just provide the grounds for you to conceptualize why the energy work does work and, you know, encourage you still to just go do more of your own research and go in your own pigeonholes because it's YouTube and there's probably a bunch of people on here who love researching stuff like I do. Um, okay. So in, now that we see the body as this ball of frequencies interacting with one another, instead of it being like your brain is thinking for you. Um, okay, a fun fact along with that is that most of our ancestors from all over the world, if you go far back enough, like believed that every organ had intelligence. It's so bizarre that we think with our brains only now. And it has a lot to do with speaking English because the English language draws us up into our heads. Um, but you can genuinely listen to your heart and you can listen to your gut. You can listen to it literally because it has sound. And it, in that sound is a resonance that you naturally will understand as a human being. Because if you think about a song with a sad note or a happy note, no one, like whatever language you speak in across the world, you'll know naturally what that sound means. If it's sad or if it's happy. You have that intelligence naturally as a human. Um, and so when I use tuning forks, to do energy work on people, what I'm literally doing is I begin with a pendulum, which is a ball on a string. I use the pendulum over the energy centers of the body, which also includes your knees and your feet. And I just use the pendulum to see where you have blockages. It will spin if there's energy flowing um, and it will stop or it'll go in a line if energy is stuck there. And then I go to the edge of your field, five, six feet off the side of the body, and I begin striking my tuning fork and combing through your bio field. And when I do this, um, there's like all kinds of strange things that happen, but I can hear like in the overtones and undertones of the fork sometimes it'll be like really sharp all of a sudden and I'll be like well that was noticeable and then I kind of just be grounded and listen into it and um, sometimes like a clear intuitive hit will come through where I'm like oh this feels like I might get specific information about this is fear of something you know or it may be less specific and I'm like at, at the very least, able to hear that the tuning fork has gone and made this crazy sound. But regardless, when I'm in your field and the fork changes, it clearly means we've come up across some body of frequency running off your body, some body of vibration that is disharmonic, it is clustered, it's not in flow, and you want to be in flow. Likewise, um, those clusters of vibration that are not in flow can carry what we call biophotons. So, because you're a light being, as you go through life, if you experience traumatic events or if you have really damaging thought patterns that you repeat to yourself, like shame, let's use the example of shame that runs off a little above your right hip. So um, guilt and shame. Your right hip itself carries the frequencies of busyness, overdoing, overthinking. Those are like incredibly common in a capitalist society. The way that our history is, um, blah, blah, blah. We're capitalist society, you have to stay busy, and like no one has time to feel their feelings. So 
the right hip is crazy for a lot of people. So as I'm combing through that, I may be coming across biophotons, which are light particles that you have fed unconsciously off your right hip, like throughout your life. And now that energy that could be in your central channel bringing you vitality, bringing you youthfulness, bringing you spaz, the inspiration to go through your day, like um, that energy is draining you and it is not serving you over off the right hip, right? So I comb with my fork and I draw those bio photons that you have emitted through those stressful encounters and I slowly comb them into your central channel. And that's it. It's not, it's really not that crazy when I get all the explaining out of the way. It's literally really intuitive. And it's so fun living in the age of Aquarius because we are starting to remember and uncover information that was well known by our ancestors a long time ago. But there's so much to be said about sound and sound healing because it is the most basic principle that your body operates on. And while I don't have any shade to throw at doctors who want to prescribe you medication, like that stuff is really helpful, but at best, or it can be really helpful, I'll say that, but at best you're still dealing with symptoms instead of the core issue. Um, and yeah, like, I feel like this really changes everything about the way we view health because instead of you thinking, oh, my right hip is out, like it must be a genetic thing because, you know, everyone in my family's had right hip issues and also like, you know, I walk for work and I'm a male person or whatever. Like I'm just making up an example. Um, I think that it would make a lot of sense to attribute so much more to your internal wellness and what it, your experience is as a human that directly correlates to the health of your body. Those things cannot be separated, right? Because your thoughts create electric currents and your body is made of electric currents. So those things are not separate. Um, okay. I think the last thing I need to talk about is just understanding that, and this is like, this is found in a lot of like old religious texts and stuff like that, but you can take this or leave it. Just take what resonates. But I believe that we are creators. Like, there's a lot of theology and things like that that say, like, in between the heavens and the earth. Like, there's something to be said about that. And I believe that that is us as humans. We are these these beings that embody life between heavens and earth. And from being interconnected between those things, we have the ability to create because we have intention. And one of the craziest things that I witness all the time when I'm doing energy work on someone is if I am combing across an area that is really messed up and it will not move, it will not harmonize, sometimes I'll be feeling the energy of it and be getting sick and lightheaded and I'm like, okay, we really need this to move along. And I will ask the person who I'm doing energy work on to use their intention to breathe into it, feel into it, and allow it to move and be moved. And the fork will harmonize, like just like that. I get to witness the effects of intention in such a clear way. And it's really quite illuminating into how much power we have as creators, as human beings. So when I 
do my sessions that I'm posting on, on my YouTube, such as my Aries moon embodied and my Taurus moon embodied, and next I'm making my Gemini moon embodied. I use my mind and I use my creative power as a human. The sun is, ugh. But I project a hologram of the collective body um, onto my massage table. And if you want to read more about why that would work in a, in a more scientific approach, it can be explained through quantum physics. Um, you know, the... I want to read. I'm going I'm to read a quote. Okay. Sorry, I'm so scattered. It's kind of hard to explain all this stuff. Okay. I'm just going to read quickly the electric universe theory and what that means. From the smallest particle to the largest galactic formation, a web of electrical circuitry connects and unifies all of nature, organizing galaxies, energizing stars giving birth to planets, and on our own world, controlling weather and animating biological organisms. There are no isolated islands in an electric universe. That's a quote from David Talbot and Wall Thornhill from Thunderbolts of the Gods, okay? Doesn't that tie together the energy work I'm trying to explain with astrology? So if you are made up of these waveforms and particles and, you know, you have an Aries moon, then I'm like, okay, then you have a formation in you that is somewhat more or less like a universal thing. Like Aries moon people clearly have patterns between them that are very Aries moon. So I use my mind and I bring those people across the time-space continuum of quantum physics to all be present on my table all at once. And I do that, and then I go conduct my energy work session, and it's, like, really crazy because I can just so clearly feel exactly how it feels like when there's a three-dimensional human on my table. So that is how it works. Um, fun, fun thing is this was discovered by Eileen McCusick, like I said, completely by mistake. She struck a tuning fork around someone when she was like her massage client. And then she's pretty like clear audience. And she heard some craziness in, in the tuning fork and she was like, what in the world is that? And then she basically dove into research and continued practicing with tuning forks around people's bodies for like the last 25 years. And she's now brought us this modality. Um, and it's so exciting to think about the level that it can probably reach to in the future of how much we can improve our health for folks with depression, spinal cord injuries, whatever, whatever, you name it, there's clearly a lot of health issues in our day and age. Um, but we've now understood the most basic way that our human body works. And it's so simple. And that's what I love is that you just are made up of sound and light. And so if you approach your body from that perspective, like the amounts of shifts that we've considered so hard, like, oh, you got to pedal to the metal. You got to meditate for hours every day to be like happy and sane. It's like these shifts can take place so much more readily because we've remembered and uncovered this fundamental knowledge. Um, and it's really fun to be a part of because I, I witnessed it happening on my table all the time. So clearly I like really believe in, in what I do. Um, yeah, I could probably say more, um, that, you know, like an important word to know is ether. Ether is like the, the particles that are in everything that electricity moves through. It's called ether. Um, a lot of people think ether is God because there seems to be an intelligence to it that you can train yourself to listen to. Um, and like, yeah, that kind of, 
you know, if you've ever heard of someone having their Akashic records read, where, like, someone can listen in and find out all these stories about, like, your past lives and, like, your soul's story through the universe, um, it, again, makes sense with this theory that everything is electromagnetic, um, and there seems to be an intelligence to it, and you're not separate from it, um, so I hope this has made a bit of sense. It kind of feels like I've just been rambling, but if you have any questions or if you have any comments or you would like to add information or you would like to request some kind of specific video, then please do so in my comments. And if you like the material, please like and subscribe if you want to show the love. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put this out there so that there's a bit more information about what the heck it is I'm doing. All right. Bye, y'all.